first thing you want to do when making an animal batik pillow is get a piece of paper and draw an idea of what you want to make. Go ahead and add some texture, some patterns on there, maybe some fur. Oh, that ended out as I wanted it to. So after you have your animal and you like how it looks, get a pencil and draw it onto your fabric. And I just have some wax paper underneath that I'm going to let it dry on. So we're just maybe, using white cotton. Maybe I could like draw it inside the eye. You can, just remember you're gonna be using glue after, and glue is hard to make tiny little details, so make sure it's big. Okay. Once you dry your animal on your fabric, you wanna use this washable Elmer's glue gel to trace over your pencil lines. If you're right-handed, you wanna start on the left, and if you're left-handed, you wanna start on the right so you don't smear your glue across it as you're drawing. So you're just gonna cover your pencil lines with that glue. And then you wanna let it dry overnight or for at least 12 hours. And then we'll do the next step, which is painting it in. If your glue has dried, then you wanna cut your fabric out. So you can cut it out in a square or you can cut it out the shape of your animal. But if you cut it out, you want to make sure you cut it out leaving room around the edges because when you sew it, it's going to come in a little bit closer. Then you want to cut out a piece of fabric. It can be printed or just white for the back of your pillow. We're going to be painting the back of our pillow too. Once you get your color mixed up, you need to add some water to it so it's thin like a watercolor or else your paint's going to be really thick. So the glue should disappear when we wash it, and hopefully the pencil should disappear. Once you finish painting it, you cover all the white, you need to let it dry for a few hours or overnight. Okay, when they are completely dry, you want to put them in some hot water. I'm just putting them in hot water in my bathtub and let them soak for 15 minutes to a half hour. Let all of the glue dissolve and leave your nice white batik lines. Then you let them dry. You can throw them in the dryer or you can just let them air dry. This is what they look like after I've been rubbing the paint off of the glue. Take them out to dry or throw them in your dryer. Once you let them dry, I ironed these after I put them in the dryer. They're really wrinkly. You want to get another piece of fabric for the back of your pillow and you want to turn it so the outsides are facing each other. So if it's hard for you to tell which side is the front and the back, the back usually looks like there's a little bit more water spots on it than the front. So like here's the front side and there's the back side. Then you can use just a needle and thread or if you have a sewing machine, what you're going to do is sew around your pillow leaving about this much space for you to stuff it with stuffing or cotton or fabric or whatever you have to stuff it with. So I'm just gonna start sewing it. I'm just using white thread. We wanna leave about a quarter inch at the end right here. So we don't wanna sew right next to the very edge. We wanna sew a little bit in. So I'm just gonna keep the edge of my sewing foot right next to the edge of my fabric. So you sew a little bit and then we're gonna go back to kinda of make a little bit of a knot. And then you're just gonna sew around the edges of the whole pillow. Remember to leave a little bit of space so that you can stuff cotton in. So you don't ever wanna put your finger anywhere by this. You just try to keep it back. This is the medium speed. This is super fast. So now I'm just gonna lift my needle out, pull it away, and then cut the string. Cut the string, and then we want to fold it inside out. And I wish I would have left a little bit of a bigger hole. Use the little hole that you created to turn it the right side out. And then you're gonna stuff it with cotton or old clothes, whatever you have around. You're going to take some cotton and you're gonna stuff it full of it, or you can use old socks and pieces of fabric like I'm gonna use in this box because we have a lot of it and it'll make it a little bit heavier. So you're gonna have a little opening that you need to close at the end. I am not a professional seamstress by any means. So I just fold it in like this and then I just sew over the top of it. The last step is to enjoy it. So I got this idea from thatartistwoman.org. She has a ton of amazing ideas for art for children. And 
So you can make a ton of different projects with this. I've made blankets using it. You don't just have to make a pillow. She makes wind socks using it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry there were so many steps, but enjoy it and have a great day and we'll see you around on YouTube.